Hello and welcome. This is the third in our series of videos showing you how to work with newspapers. In this particular video we are going to walk through the process of indexing articles and managing clippings. So to begin we're going to go over to the left hand side of our dashboard and we're going to go up to the manage records and add records section and we're going to click on without a file. And this will take us to our screen where we can put in the headline or title of our article or clipping, indicate the publication from where it has been taken, the publication date, and our media type. So the headline for our article is Proton Girl Shoots Father. And the publication from where it has been taken is the Flesherton Advanced. And as we've already added our publication, which was the first of our video, we know that it's going to pop up for us. If you do start typing away and you get past the third letter in your publication and it does not pop up, it means you have to go back in and add it, in which case please do refer to the first in our videos and we will walk you through that process. It is quite simple. Now the publication date. Let's say the publication date for this particular article or the issue from where it's taken is March 23rd, 1885. Now do keep in mind that when you're entering the publication for the first time, you do have a field similar to this where you're going to indicate the run of digital images, the years that you have for the digital images in your collection. In this case, for the Flushington Advanced, we know we have digital, digital images that run from 1880 to 1950, so this falls well within that run. Now the media type, of course, is going to be newspaper, so we're going to indicate that, and we're going to go ahead and add our record. Now this takes us to a screen that should become more and more familiar to you, your first descriptive metadata screen. You'll have your red flags that just reminds you to check a few fields so you're not forget anything before you leave because remember if you do leave your screen before you update then the, all the data you've entered will be lost. You'll have to go back and do it again. So the first thing I want to do is make my record public. Now this is completely up to you when or if you put it on public display, you certainly can leave it suppressed for the time being, for whatever reason you need to do that. You can put it on public display at any time. And alternatively, if you want to suppress it off public display, all you have to do is go back into the record and click no, and it will take it off the public side. Do keep in mind that the indexing cycle for Vita is a half hour to one and a half hour, so depending where you are in the cycle will dictate how quickly your record will appear on the public view. So if you're working away and you go and check it, it's not there, don't panic. Just give it some time to work the cycle through. So we've already indicated our media type, which is newspaper. And our secondary media type is the fact this is a text item. We also want to indicate our item type. Now when you're setting up your agency, there's all kinds of checklists you can set up that deals with item types, media types, even your geolocation mapping. It just saves a little time on your workflow. So in our checklist, we have these set up and I've got clippings there for me, so I'm just going to choose that. There's our title and there's the publication that the article is attached to, the Flushington Advanced. And there's our publication date. Now, pagination, if you know what edition, section, page number, and column number that this article can be found within this particular publication or issue, then it'd be great if you could add it there. Again, it's another access point into your collection and helps users really drill down into the collection and help find their items more quickly. If you don't have that information, that's fine. Just know that this, these fields are there to use if you do have that information at your fingertips. Now, the creator name and role. In this case, we want to indicate who the author of the article is. So I'm going to say it's Hugh Brown. And of course, we want to put in that he is the author. And again, these fields are much the same as any record that you're going to be adding in Vita. You have an option to put any secondary contributor names and their roles. Now subjects. In this case, remember the headline is Proton Girl Shoots Father. You might want to put in shootings and that's already in our thesaurus. You might want to add, even though we're going to map this, again, another access point, Proton and any other subjects that are appropriate to the specific item that you are describing, you can pop them in there. Now if you want to add an item that doesn't show up when you start typing, remember after your third letter, 
If you start typing away and it doesn't pop up, it means it's not in the thesaurus. All you have to do is enter into this field here and it will be added and you can go and choose it. Now personal names. Now I know that the names in this article are Ruby Campbell and Robert Campbell. So following correct procedure, we're going to put the surname first, followed by the first name, semicolon. Remember, always separate names by semicolon. And the father was Robert Campbell, so we're going to put in the surname. Robert. So that is the protocol for entering names. You can enter as many names as is appropriate to the item you're describing. And also keep in mind, don't put names together. So if I put Ruby and Robert Campbell together, then you won't be able to search for these individuals separately. So do keep that in mind when you're entering names. Now if you were dealing with some kind of business document or an article about a business, if you want to put corporate names, there's the field for that. And of course, as always, there's your descriptive and notes fields. Now, I happen to have a transcription of this article, which I am going to put in the full text box down here, which I'll get to in a minute. So if you have that at your fingertips, so you've already had it transcribed and you can use this full text box, then you don't really need to use the description and notes field unless you have extra information that doesn't fit in with the transcription, then you can put it in those fields. Again, the more information you can provide, always the better. I do want to indicate the language that is in the item. In this case, we're just dealing with one language, English. If you wanted to indicate French, you can do that as well. And again, pop any other secondary or third language, any that you need to describe the fact that they're in the item, you can put them in this field. Mystery questions, again, a great outreach tool. Please do make use of it. Just remember, if you are going to make use of the mystery question, make sure you have someone on the other end who can moderate and respond to these questions because they're all viewable on the public side. Now, getting to the full text, as I mentioned, you can put in the transcription here. You can do it in one of two ways. You can literally just type in the transcription on the fly. You can also add HTML markup if you wish to make it a little more reader friendly on the screen. I have happened to save mine in a, I believe, a TXT file. So let me go over here and grab my, yes, my TXT. I'm just going to go and grab all this. And literally, I'm just going to copy and paste. Get rid of that, move this back. And I'm going to pop that in. Now it probably would be prudent to add a little bit of uh, HTML here to break that up. It's kind of grouped together, but I won't take the time to do that. Let's just say I want to make this stand out a bit more, just to illustrate. And you might want to put page breaks in. That sort of thing, again, is completely up to you, but just know that you have that option if you wish to take advantage of it. So before I leave the screen, I'm going to update my record so I don't lose all the information I just carefully put in. And now I'm going to go over and I'm going to geomap my article. So again, as I mentioned earlier, you can set up your geographic locations when you set up your agency. You can set up all your checklists. And we've set all these up just to demonstrate you can put as many in as you tend to work with the same areas. You can put them in. It saves a bit of time on your workflow. As you can see, we do not have Proton in our checklist, so I am going to go down and add it. But first I have to make sure that I've got my right area. My constraints are correct. So I'm going to go and select my country. This is quite simple. And my province. And now I can go in and add in Proton. And there we have it. So you can see it's mapped for us there. Now because this is being taken from um, a Flushington newspaper, I'm also going to add that in. And again, you can add as many locations as is appropriate to the record. So I'm going to go ahead and update that. And the next thing I'm going to do is go over into my admin screen. Now again, here there are fields that are going to be private, which are very beneficial for you to use for your collection management purposes. If you have a unique identifier or number assigned to this item, or perhaps the issue or going up the line to the publication, you can add it in here. This is viewable on the public side, so again, it's just another access point into your collection. 
Now the language of description, this is the language you're using to describe the item and you can only choose one in this case right now. So we're using English, so that's already the default selection for us. If you have this aggregated into a specific collection, again, you might want to indicate he that here. Again, so users and also for collection management purposes, you know that these are all aggregated in under one collection. Donor, private and public, those are pretty self-explanatory. I walk through those in more detail in our initial series on how to add and manage records. So I won't take time to going through those. Just know that you do have an option here. If you're not sure if a field is going to be publicly viewable, click on the little help icon and it will tell you whether something is viewable or not on the public side. That way you'll know how and what to use the fields for. And again, when you set up your agency, you will have set up your permissions and your copyright information. There's always the default here. If you don't know the Creative Commons license for this appropriate or this particular record, then you can leave it undecided. And basically that means it's up to the user to determine the rights for rights of use for this item. So again, before I leave my screen, I'm going to update my information. And finally, where the second last is groups. Again, we have a video for working with groups, how to create them and why. Just briefly, creating groups is just good collection management practice. Also, if you want to create a slideshow or a virtual exhibit or a special grouping somewhere down the line that's going to feature on the front of your homepage Vita site, then you're going to want to put stuff in groups because that's where you're going to pull your items from. Otherwise, you'd have to search through your whole collection to find what it is you want to include in these special collections. So I'm going to go and put mine in newspapers and I'm going to update that. And finally links, just a brief explanation. Again, I walk through this in more detail in my initial series on how to add and manage records. If you wanted to point out to an external website, perhaps you have an overarching website in which the Vita is just a small part of your collection, then you can point to that by just putting the title of the website the, its URL and you can even go and grab the URL for a thumbnail which would be the representation for that site. Click add and it will list down the navigation of your right hand side of your page. Okay so what do we have so far? If I go and take a look in my internal display I can see that I have my full text transcription. As you can see, it probably would have been beneficial to mark that up, put some page breaks in there, make it a little more reader friendly on the screen. Here's all the metadata that we've added. Our subjects, which are fully, fully searchable, as are the personal names. And you can see this is why you want to make sure that you don't put in the names together because that will group them under one heading. So if I wanted to search for Robert Campbell or Ruby Campbell, and if I had them under one name, then I would only be searching for them under that one entity, if that makes any sense. So I'll make sure that you give them each individual entries, that way they're searchable individually. There is my mapping for my item and my permissions and copyright status. Okay, but there is something else that I do want to do. If you happen to have a representation or a image, a JPEG of the actual clipping or article, you can go ahead and add that at any time. So you go into your file text screen, which is the screen you're going to go into to add anything, whether you're starting out or after the fact. And I'm going to click on associate file with this record. And I'm going to select my category. So in this case, because it's not a full image, it's basically a hero shot. I'm just going to select thumb and regular. And I'm going to let the image resize because we have the two views. Don't worry about this. We're not working with PDFs at the moment. Now I'm going to go and grab my file. And it is the Ruby Campbell clipping. And there's my JPEG. I'm going to choose that. Start the upload. Continue. And you can see it has been added. So let's take a view of this in the public side. And you can see there is my JPEG of the actual article itself. There is my full text transcription, my metadata, and my Google mapping. 
So that's basically the walkthrough and how to add an article or clipping to a publication. Now, if you want to do any more work on this, all you have to do is click on the main menu and you can access your top 100 records at any time and you can see here is the latest we just did. So if we wanted to do any editing, we can go back and do that at any time. Oh, and there's also the group of related records that I have, newspapers. So if I click on that, it takes me into all the newspapers I have aggregated in that group. So you have everything. It's kind of like one-stop shopping. Okay, so that's basically how you do the clippings and articles. Don't forget, if you ever get stuck or if you need further detail, let me just go back up here. We have our help site where we have all our manuals listed. And in our working with newspapers, we have it broken out into different sections and there's a section on how to add an article or clipping. It does contain a little more detail than what I walked through. So basically between the video and the clipping or the manuals, we should have you covered. If you ever run into any difficulties, if you have technical issues or have any questions, do contact us at help at vitatoolkit.ca. And I hope you found this video useful. We have one more in the series to go. We're going to be working next with birth, marriage, and death records. Hope to see you later. Bye for now.